All right, in this lesson, we're gonna be looking at the weighted average costing method using the periodic inventory method. So that's what we're gonna be looking here. And to do that, let's get started here with giving you an overview of the weighted average inventory system. So the weighted average costing system tries to reconcile the difference in FIFO and LIFO method and create an average. Now, basically what it's gonna do is if we were gonna calculate the same example using FIFO and LIFO, weighted average is gonna come in right in between those two. Not directly in the middle because we're using a weighted average system, but it's gonna come somewhere in between. So if we calculate cost of goods sold and FIFO's over here, LIFO's over here, weighted average is gonna be somewhere in the middle. If we calculate ending inventory and FIFO's over here, LIFO's over here, that ending inventory for weighted average is gonna be somewhere in the middle as well. So this is kind of like the best of those both worlds when it comes to costing inventory. Now, just as an overview, and these are things that we've talked about before if you've watched the FIFO and LIFO section, but you know, why do we use weighted average? Well, or when do we use weighted average, I just say. So weighted average is usually used for low volume, volume items. It's also used in high volume in sales. So low sorry, low value items, but high volume in sales. So meaning that typically these are items that are not terribly expensive. Um, and that's again, a relative word, but terribly expensive. And usually we sell a lot of them um, when compared to like cars, jewelry, boats, homes, okay? So low value items, high volume in sales. The third thing to think about is that usually this is homogeneous items that we use, so some of the same items. For instance, when you think of buying grapes, they're all pretty much the same. They're all made the same way. When we talk about uh, a bag of chips, when you buy a Lay's potato chips bag, all the bags are pretty much the same. They all have chips in there. They all weigh 20 ounces. They all are packaged the same way. So they're very homogeneous when it comes to the inventory item. And the last thing here is they're usually harder to track from a cost of goods sold standpoint, or it's just not practical to cost each individual item and keep track of that in our retail store. So that's kind of an overview when we use weighted average inventory system. And again, we can use the same reasoning for FIFO and LIFO. Now, I don't want to like mix you up because there is actually more than two steps, but the weighted average from a broad view is really just two steps. So it, the first step is to calculate the average cost of each item based on the following weighted average cost formula. So the first step is we gotta figure out what the weighted average cost of each unit is. And so we use this calculation here, cost of goods available for sale, we're also gonna divide that by the number of units available for sale, and that's gonna give us our weighted average cost. So we're gonna take our cost of goods available for sale, divided by the number of units available for sale, and that's gonna give us our weighted average cost. So what that's gonna give us is, that's gonna give us a per unit cost. And then we're gonna use that per unit cost and extrapolate the amount that we actually sold. So in step two, we're gonna apply the weighted average cost to all the units that were sold to create the cost of goods sold. And then we're, we could also take that weighted average cost and multiply it by the inventory that we still have and uh, get our ending inventory. Now, when we're applying this as well as our FIFO and LIFO, it's important to remember that we're gonna do this calculation for each item. We're not gonna combine all of our goods available for sale. We're all gonna keep, uh, come together with we're only gonna add up all the costs of goods available for sale for that particular item. Why is that important? Because each item is gonna have different characteristics, each item has different costs, and each item um, sells for different prices. So we don't wanna mix and match. So when we're thinking about this and FIFO and LIFO, it should be the same item that we're calculating is. The only difference was is that we might purchase that same item the next time at a higher price or a lower price, so then we need to do a new weighted average cost calculation. So that's the two-step process, although like I said, don't get too wrapped up that it's two steps. There's actually many steps that go into it, uh, but that's generally what we're doing. Figure out the cost, 
uh, per unit, then apply that cost per unit to the number of units that we sold of that same item. So here's an example that we're gonna walk you through. It's a very simple example. Company A is a wholesaler who buys machines from a local manufacturer and sells them directly to a customer. Company A's a has purchased five machines to sell for their cut to their customers and information is shown below. So when we look at this, we're just assuming that all of these machines are the same. Hence, that's why they're sold for $18,000 a unit. In the month of May, company A sold two machines. Machines B and D were sold. What is the cost of goods sold for May, the ending inventory, and the gross profit for the sale of those two machines, assuming the weighted average method? Uh, what is the journal entry that is made at the end of May for the sale of the machine? So let's break this down here a little bit because there is a lot here. The first step here is we're going to need to calculate the average cost. So what's the average cost for the, the units that we have in our possession? So to do that, we know that we're going to use the weighted average cost equation. We're going to take the cost of goods available for sale. So how do we get the cost of goods available for sale? Well, we literally need to add up all all the costs for all the units that we purchase. So in this case, we have it right here conveniently. We have all of these costs so we can add it up and we get 68,950, which would be the total. So our co cost of goods available for sale is 68,000. $950. Then we need to divide that by our number of units available for sale. So how many units do we have available for sale? Well, we have five units, machines A, B, C, D, and E. That's five. So we're going to divide that by five and our weighted average cost is 13,790. So another way to think of it is, sure, some of them cost 12,006, some of them cost 17,65, but on average, our five units cost us $13,790. So that's what we're gonna use as our costing method going into step two. So in step two, we're gonna apply that weighted average cost of $13,790 to the two units that we sold. So to calculate the cost of goods sold, we're gonna take the number of units that we sold, in this case, two, and we're gonna multiply it by the weighted average cost. So the weighted average cost that we just calculated in one was $13,790. So $13,790 times two gives us $27,580. So our cost of goods sold is $27,580. $580 under the weighted average costing method. So that's what we have there, but we're not done. We need to calculate ending inventory, goods available for sale and gross profit. And well, we just calculated cost of goods sold. So we've got that set. So let's go ahead and move the screen here and we're gonna calculate all these individual items. So. Uh, first of all, we're gonna look at our goods available for sale. Well, goods available for sale is the cost of all the goods available for sale. Well, we already calculated that out. Actually, the problem already calculated that out as 68,950. So $68,950. The next part is we gotta calculate cost of goods sold, which we just did in step two. So we did two times, um, hold on. I don't have that screen up, two times, uh, 13,790, so two times 13,790 gives us $27,580. So now we've got cost of goods sold, we've got goods available for sale. Well, with those two numbers, we can actually calculate our ending inventory. How do we calculate our ending inventory? We took, we take our goods available for sale, subtract what we sold, in this case, 27,580, to get our ending inventory. So 68,950 minus 27,580 gives us $41,370. So our ending inventory is $41,370. If we were to add up, well, we can't really add up, so just believe me here, uh, but we could have taken the 13,790 times four or three, so 13,790 times three, and that should give us 41,000. 370, which would be the three units that we still had in ending inventory. All right, now it's time to do gross profit. Well, we know that we sell all of our products here at $18,000. So 18 times two, because we sold two units is $36,000. Subtract our 
cost of goods sold, which would have been $27,580. And that's gonna give us our gross profit of $8,420. So we have a gross profit of $8,420, which means we had a good profit on our two sales of our units. All right, so that's what we have here. Now we have to do the journal entries. So for the journal entries, we have the sale of the good. So that cost, that sale was $36,000. And then the cost of the good sold, the cost of the good sold would have been $27,580. So now that we know those two, we can do the journal entries. So for the sale, we had sales. So we probably received cash. So we're gonna debit cash for 36,000 and credit sales revenue of 36,000. Then our cost of the inventory, our inventory based on our weighted average method was 27,580. So we're gonna debit cost of goods sold and inventory is our credit in the amount of 27,580, 27,580. 80, and that would be our journal entry. That journal entry should be familiar if you watched our FIFO and LIFO method, as well as our uh, specific identification. So kind of going a little quick here, but you should have seen this already before in the last couple of lessons. So that's what the journal entry looks like for the weighted average costing method uh, for the two units that we sold to our customers for the total sales price of $36,000. So that is a look at the weighted average costing method. That's an overview. We walked you through what weighted average costing would look like, the two steps, and then we did kind of a simple example of how we actually apply the weighted average costing method. In the next lesson, we're actually going to do a comprehensive example in which we're actually going to throw in quantities and we're going to have to figure how to do that in that next lesson. So hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure you press the like button below. And if you're looking for worksheets that go along with all of these lessons, head over to my website at patrickleemsa.com or click in the link in the far right. And I've got your next lesson right over here. So just click that link and it'll take you to that video. So until then, we'll see you in the next lesson.